He says, you know, you the church, you need to stop doing your thing and asking God to bless it. He said, what you the church need to do is find out what God's doing and get on board with what God's doing because what God's doing is already blessed by God. And that is challenging for you and for me, I'm sure. Not from him, from understanding that it's not a season for you and I to do our thing and trust and hope that God blesses it. It's so easy in leadership and in ministry. And can I be straight this morning? In this great nation to get told what to do, to read a book of what to do and to give our attention and affection to something like that and trust and hope that God's blessing it. In Joshua chapter 6, where Joshua is taking Jericho. Now, I know that where you live, you think it's Jericho. Where you're ministering is definitely Jericho, right? It's the most fortified city. There is no way in. There's no way out. The walls around it, the demonic stuff, all the stuff you're facing, the giants. Are, I mean, we all live in Jericho, but I'm talking about real Jericho. Jericho was a fortified city. If you do study in history, you realize there was no way in. The walls were so thick. They were so high. You couldn't get in and you couldn't get out. But whenever I've preached, I'm sure many of us have preached on Joshua 6 around Jericho, taking our city and taking our city. And I remember growing up in the church, we've grown up. We used to walk around and blow the trumpet and pretend, you know, do the whole Joshua. I mean, we've missed the point of the whole story. It's not about blowing a trumpet and marching around seven times. We did it in the 70s and the 80s. We did it. Waiting for walls to fall. They didn't fall. Why? Because we missed the point. The point wasn't the walls falling because of the marching. The point was getting God's strategy for the season and for the place. But there's a few verses in Joshua 5 that have caught my attention again. And in the first, the last few verses of Joshua 5, Joshua is now understanding that his call is to take Jericho. So his, his army's on one side and he's out there, I guess, give me some leeway. He's out there praying, thinking about it, strategizing, how are we going to do this? What are we going to do? And it says that he encounters a man with a drawn sword. And so Joshua, being the leader of conviction and concern, walks up to this man, and this is what he says. Are you for us, or are you for them? Now, come on, guys, that's a reasonable question. A man with a sword, standing there, is he guarding the city? Is he going to fight me? Is he for me? Who is this dude who wasn't there before? You see, right there, friends, is the danger in the question we ask that restricts the way we lead God's people into her glorious inheritance. While it makes sense, it's the wrong question. It restricts our walk with the Lord and our leadership. Are you for them or for us? It would have been fair for him to say, I'm for Israel and I'm for you. But he doesn't. What does he say? Neither. Why? He says, I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to take over. This is not your battle. This is not your call. This is not your church. This is not your ministry. You are on my side. I'm not on your side. Now this has got to rock some of our theology because if God be for me, who can be against me? God is with us, who can be against us? But let me tell you this, we're not having God on our side. God is calling us to be on His side. 